And the sad reality is that people are moving from where the water is, like Michigan, to where the water isn't, like Georgia. Then you throw on top of that the problems of climate change, and you've really created a major problem, a disconnect between supply and demand. A single 60-watt incandescent bulb that burns 12 hours a day will, by the end of the year, consume as much as 6,300 gallons of water. One bulb. University of Arizona Regents Professor Robert Glennon has brought national attention to the uses and misuses of water resources. His legal scholarship has influenced policy and helped to frame the public conversation in a very big way. His new book is called Unquenchable, America's Water Crisis and What to Do About It. Please welcome to the program, Robert Glennon. And one of the reasons why I'm so proud to be a lawyer is that lawyers are people who, who tackle problems and try to solve problems. And I feel a duty to try to shape some response to problems that can help make them better. A professor of law at the University of Arizona for over 27 years, Glennon's scholarship spans environmental law to research on legal history and constitutional law. In the late 1980s, he began to focus on water. First project is one that, that still is the hallmark of what I do, which was I argued for requiring developers to purchase and retire agricultural farm rights. And it's happening. I mean, the, the, the market for water and the pricing of water are two things that are revolutionizing how we're using water in the American West. He really knows this field. He knows water law, he knows water policy. His articles have recently been published in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, he uh, blogs on the Huffington Post, has published articles there. And he's not just writing about it, he is literally shaping the debate. Well, it's funny you should ask that. Just but I will tell you that when I first started, I, I thought I knew more than I did. And the first couple of years were pretty rugged. I went to every conference there was, and I took anyone to lunch who'd go to lunch and tell me about what they were doing, and I, I ate some humble pie and tried to figure out what was going on. It may take as much as 2,500 gallons of water to grow enough corn to refine one gallon of ethanol. His career is astounding to me in the way that it has um, taken off. He, it was, a, in a sense, a detour, and that detour has become now really his field, and he's considered, you know, such, um, such a prominent voice. In addition to his scholarly articles are two influential books, The Highly Acclaimed Water Follies in 2002, and his latest, Unquenchable, published in 2009. I often tell people, oh, you have to read this book that my law professor wrote. They go, oh, we don't really read law books. Uh, but I say, no, 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 you don't understand. This is for everybody. It's so accessible. It's, it's just, it's such a compelling story. He is an incredible storyteller. And that comes through both in his books and his scholarship and as a teacher in the classroom. Glennon grew up along the waterways of Massachusetts and Michigan, studied law at Boston College, and received a PhD in history from Brandeis people have been fighting over water in the American West since the 19th century. What I think's changed is the recognition that the resource is finite. Glennon's expertise is sought globally. He has worked on advisory boards in Australia and helped to draft water law in Saudi Arabia. Locally, he helps to guide policy and collaborates across campus on water issues. You look at groundwater reform, water banking, recharge and, risk and recovery projects, and it's, it's, it, it all started here. Because the University of Arizona is the world's best university when it comes to water. He is married to Karen Adam, the presiding judge at Pima County Juvenile Court Center. When he's not working, Glennon seeks to connect with nature. Being in nature makes me feel most alive. I love the outdoors. It's one of the reasons I was attracted to Arizona in the first place. Uh, a couple of my passions are backpacking into the Marble Canyon area of the Grand Canyon, fly fishing, 
and uh, whitewater rafting. I have my own boat. He does very dangerous things in the river, in my opinion. <laughs> More dangerous than he should. Um, but he's, uh, so he, he basically kind of lives and breathes his work. There are a lot of things we can do to save water. And we can reuse water, which Arizona is doing a lot of. We're really at the cutting edge on that. We can harvest water. We can, we can desalinize water. We can price water appropriately. We can encourage the reallocation of water. So we have a menu of options out there to keep the crisis from becoming a catastrophe. So I'm optimistic, very optimistic. But I'm also mindful of the words of Winston Churchill. Uh, who once proclaimed that the United States will always do the right thing after it has explored every other option. <laughs> <laughs>